Hey everybody, welcome back to Guns and Gadgets, your source for Second Amendment news. Uh, yeah, I am about to tell you uh, eight states that are telling the federal government, and this is great. Let's talk about what's going on in Mississippi. Mississippi has submitted a bill today. It's House Bill 753. I have the bill right, right, like right there. I've only read the first half of this bill. Six sections in this bill. Let's go over it real quick. We'll hit the highlights of it. And this could be the start of something pretty damn cool if this takes off. So let's get into the title of the bill. This usually tells you a lot about it. Uh, Interstate Compact on Second Amendment Sanctuary. Authorize the state of Mississippi to enter into with other southern states. Now this was put into play by six representatives, all Republican. Uh, Representative William Arnold. Larry Bird, <laughs> no, not our Larry Bird, but you know, B-Y-R-D. Uh, Lester Carpenter, Dana Criswell, Steve Hopkins, and Vince Mangold. Uh, they are the primary sponsors for this. Brand new bill, like I said, was just submitted. I think the ink is still wet. And of course, by the time you're watching it, it'll be evening time. The summary on the bill itself is this. An act to authorize the state of Mississippi to enter into an interstate compact with southern states for the purpose of operating as Second Amendment sanctuary states. To establish the Interstate Commission on Second Amendment Sanctuary and prescribe its powers and duties. Now remember the Constitution said uh, any powers not specifically delegated to the federal government were retained and the states kept that power. Now this is something that falls within that limitation of the federal government. It continues to exempt certain firearms, firearms accessories, and ammunition in the state from federal regulation. You've seen something similar with this here already. Uh, you got Kansas who has done it, Missouri, I think Wyoming. Uh, there are a few states that have done a Second Amendment, Second Amendment Preservation Act, but this goes a little further than that. Again, in the summary, to declare certain federal statutes, regulations, rules, and orders unconstitutional under the Constitution of the United States and unenforceable in this compact region. To require the attorneys general for compact states to file any legal action to prevent implementation of a federal statute, regulation, rule, or order that violates the rights of a resident of a compact state and related purposes. So this could be huge. You get a group of states, they join as a, uh, as a group, as a conglomerate, and they are going to protect each other and work as a team to keep the federal anti-gunners at bay. Sounds great. How are they going to do it? Let's talk about this bill. Section 1. The following compact of the southern states for the pr purpose of operating Second Amendment sanctuary states in the southern states be, and the same is, hereby ratified and approved, whereas the Second Amendment of the United States Constitution reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And whereas the United States Supreme Court in District of Columbia versus Heller, remember Dick Heller? He was on this channel. That's floating above. If you haven't seen that interview, watch that. That dude is awesome. But where the Supreme Court in DC versus Heller, uh, 2008 affirmed uh, an individual's right to possess firearms unconnected with a service and a militia for traditionally lawful purposes such as self-defense within the home and whereas the United States Supreme Court in McDonald versus Chicago in 2010 affirmed that the right of an individual to keep and bear arms as protected under the Second Amendment is incorporated by the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment against the states and whereas the United States Supreme Court in U.S. versus Miller in 1939 opined that firearms that are part of the ordinary military equipment or with the use that could contribute to the common defense are protected by the Second Amendment, meaning every gun out there, no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property except by due process of law, and it goes in more and more and more and more, but you see what it's saying, right? It's casting that umbrella saying these are the rules of the land, and you can see what they're about to do. They're setting up that, that umbrella, that shield. Now, therefore, in consideration of the mutual agreements, covenants, and obligations assumed by the respective states who are parties hereto, here and referred to as states, uh, the said several states do hereby form a geographical district or region consisting of the areas lying within the boundaries of the contracting states, which, for the purpose of this compact, shall constitute an area of Second Amendment state sanctuary, wherein the states which are parties here to prohibit the state and municipal agencies from using assets to implement or aid implementation of federal statutes. So this section, what it's saying is that in the boundaries 
of this group we're forming, whoever signs into it, whatever states sign into it, we will work to keep the federal gun control out. We're sick and tired of it. We're going to take what is given to us, our states, the powers in the Constitution, we're going to take it serious and we're going to use it to protect our citizens. And this is freaking great. These are the states that are in this bill looking to get this done. Tennessee, Georgia, Louisiana, Mississippi, West Virginia, Arkansas, Alabama, Kentucky, Oklahoma. There's nine states right now looking to say, you know what, all this Michael Bloomberg bullshit that's going on, all this anti-gun stuff that everybody's talking, you know what, that's what we're going to do with it. We're taking care of our own. We're going to start this bubble of constitutional protection, which we shouldn't even need anyway. But I digress. These states are stepping up. This could be like the last thing before shit gets real, right? Uh, this is, it's pretty bad that we've gotten to this, but by gosh, this is a freaking great idea. In fact, I used to live in Louisiana, and if this goes through, <laughs> you might see this house go for sale immediately. Now, all that said, just sets this thing up, okay? Now, what are they gonna do? That's the next section here, section two, findings and purpose. I'll just hit on it real quick, and then we'll keep moving, and I'll, I'll try to digest it and let you know what it actually means in real English, layman's terms, right? So, a statute, regulation, rule, or order that has the purpose, intent, or effect of confiscating any firearm, banning any firearm, limiting the size of a magazine for any firearm, imposing any limit on ammunition that may be purchased for any firearm, or requiring the registration of any firearm or its ammunition infringes on a citizen's right to bear arms in violation of the Second Amendment to the Constitution of the United States, and, therefore, is not made in accordance with the Constitution of the United States is not authorized by the Constitution of the United States, is not supreme law of the land, and consequently is invalid in this region and shall be considered null and void and of no effect in this region. And further authority for this compact is the following. So they're saying, you wanna do any of that gun control shit? Ain't coming here. It's not coming, don't even try it, and this is what we're gonna do about it. Then it goes into section three. A state, county, or a municipal agency uh, may not use or authorize the use of an asset to implement or aid in the implementation of a requirement of a an order of the president of the united states a federal regulation or a law enacted by the united states congress that is applied to or infringes on a person's right under the second amendment of the constitution of the united states to keep and bear arms yeah that's a big big f you to the to big government there love it love it also can't deny a person a right to due process or a protection of due process that would otherwise be available to a person under the constitutions of compact states or the Constitution of the United States or the Real ID Act of 2005. <laughs> I have never seen this in any like pro 2A bill, but this is great. So they don't even want the Real ID Act of 20, 2005. Section four, remember I said there's only five, so this is the second to last. Section four says a personal firearm, a firearm accessory, or ammunition that is possessed in a state within this compact region or manufactured commercially or privately in a state within this compact region and that remains in the state is not subject to federal law or federal regulations, including registration under the authority of the United States Congress to regulate interstate commerce as those items have not traveled in interstate commerce. It also says, this section applies to a firearm, a firearm accessory, or ammunition that is possessed in a state within the compact region or manufactured in a state within the compact region from basic materials and that can, can be manufactured without the inclusion of any significant parts imported from an, another state. So what this is saying that everything's gotta be made, manufactured within our region for this to apply. It, it also says, generic and insignificant parts that have other manufacturing or consumer product applications are not firearms, firearm accessories, or ammunition, and their importation into a state within this compact region and incorporation into a firearm, firearm accessory, or ammunition manufactured in a state in this compact region does not subject the firearm, the accessory, or ammunition to federal regulation. 
Basic materials such as unmachined steel and unshaped wood are not firearms, not accessories for firearms or ammunition, and are not subject to congressional authority to regulate firearms, firearms accessories, or ammunition under interstate commerce as if they were actual firearms, accessories, or ammunition. So they can already see what the feds are going to try to do and they say, nope, you just can't take a chunk of wood and say it's a gun and not allow us to import it. The authority of the United States Congress to regulate interstate commerce in basic materials does not include authority to regulate firearms, firearms accessories, or ammunition possessed within a state in this compact region. A firearm manufactured or sold in a state within this compact region and not subject to federal regulation under this section must have the words made in and then insert the name of compact state clearly stamped on a central metallic part such as a receiver or frame. The attorneys general of each compact state may defend a citizen of a state within this compact region who is prosecuted by the government of the United States under the congressional power to regulate interstate commerce for violation of a federal law concerning the manufacture, sale, transfer, or possession of a firearm, a firearms accessory, or ammunition possessed in a state within this compact region or manufactured and retained within a state within this compact region. So, the attorneys general can defend anybody in our region if that gun accessory or ammo was made here, possessed here. There's another good one. Uh, a federal statute, regulation, rule, or order adopted, enacted, or otherwise effective on or after the effective date of this compact is unenforceable in a state within this compact region by an official agent or employee of the state within this compact region if the federal statute, regulation, rule, or order violates the Second Amendment to the Constitution of the United States by banning or restricting ownership of a semi-automatic firearm or a magazine of a firearm or requiring a firearm, magazine, or other firearm accessory to be registered. Uh, the attorneys general for each compact state shall, under the Second Amendment of the Constitution of the United States, file legal action necessary to prevent the implementation of a federal statute, regulation, rule, or order that violates the rights of a resident of the compact state. This act shall take effect and be in force from and after July 1st, 2020. They want this bad. They want this quick. And I think this bears watching. So uh, you have now a group of states mentioned in this bill filed today in Mississippi. Uh, you got Mississippi, Louisiana, Georgia, Tennessee, West Virginia, Arkansas, Alabama, Kentucky, and Oklahoma looking to say this is our area. We're going to abide by the Constitution. And don't try to come in here and do anything about it because your laws don't work here. It's a big ask, but I love it. I love the idea. We've had individual states put up these preservation uh, bills for the Second Amendment saying, you know what, federal government, anti-gunners, your stuff doesn't work here if, it's, if this is passed. Now we're, we have groups saying, you know what, us eight states are going to come together and we're going to do what should have been done a long time ago. I think this could be freaking amazing. Let's see. I'm going to follow this close. If you want to know what's going on? Subscribe to Guns and Gadgets. This is where you'll see it because this is your premier source for Second Amendment news right here on Guns and Gadgets. Thank you for your time. This is great. This has made my day. Let's hope we see this through to fruition. Until we see each other again, be safe, stay vigilant, and carry your weapon. Take care, everybody.